Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So can you guys believe it? It is the end of The Bachelorette. Ah! I can't believe it. I have had so much fun with you guys this season. I did not expect to do these recaps. It happened on a whim here. It was the first week that The Bachelorette was on and I had no content. I was feeling super uninspired with my makeup tutorials and I just thought, you know what? Let's just do a little recap here. I love this show, why not talk about it? And I am so surprised with the positive feedback that I have received from these. It's been fun to talk to you guys, interact with you guys, hear your guys' feedback, who you guys like, who you guys don't like, your opinions. I did not expect it to be this much fun, so I just wanna say thank you guys so much for all of you that come here weekly to chat with me and watch my videos and subscribe. I have had such a fun time doing this. Don't worry though, I am not going anywhere. I plan on doing Bachelor in Paradise recaps, so we gotta get that started. Anyways, we are here today for the Bachelorette finale. JoJo, I knew you were gonna pick him. So, let's just get started. Okay, the episode starts off with Jojo and her family. They have come out to Thailand to meet her potential husband. Jordan is the first one to come and meet the family. She does give her family a forewarning about Jordan, her feelings with Jordan, how she feels like it's too good to be true, just so that they can keep that in the back of their head when they are meeting him. Jordan shows up, of course, with flowers for Jojo's mom, and he also brings everyone gifts. I thought this was a really cute idea. It was a good icebreaker, just because I'm sure Jordan was super nervous to meet Jojo's family, especially after Ben season with her brothers. They didn't seem too nice. He brings everyone silly hats and makes them wear them for a certain amount of time, but it's just for fun, just kind of lighten the mood a little bit. Jojo's mom pulls Jordan aside and wants to get to know Jordan, and Jojo's mom immediately notices everything that Jojo said. He is a playboy, he is very good looking, she says, who doesn't like Jordan? She makes Jordan promise that Jordan will not break Jojo's heart. That's a weird promise, because who knows what the future holds? How can you promise that? After their conversation, Jojo and her mom started talking privately and it was then where Jojo's mom said who wouldn't like him, he's the center of attention and that she just feels like that can spark some insecurities within their relationship because as she told Jordan, Jojo has trust issues. Jordan then meets Jojo's dad where you would think he would have asked for her dad's blessing and nope. He didn't even mention like, hey, if I were to ask your daughter, would I have the okay? Would I have the okay to do so? Nothing. Did not say anything about that. Once Jordan leaves, Jojo's brothers say that they can tell he loves her and that they don't see any red flags, but you can see that Jojo's mom has some insecurities about Jordan. Now it's time for Robbie to meet the family. Robbie also brings Jojo's mom flowers. You know, I just think Robbie is a hopeless romantic. He comes in, he's so confident, he's so talkative. He has no problem expressing his feelings for Jojo. You would think that he's been in love with Jojo for years, the way he talks about his love for her. Jojo's mom also asked Robbie to promise her that Robbie will not break Jojo's heart. And the answer, from Robbie was so much different than Jordan. Jordan basically said, yes, I promise, along those lines, kept it very short. Robbie was like, of course I wouldn't. I love this girl. She's my best friend. She's my soulmate. She's blah, 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 blah. I'm totally a words of affirmation type of girl, but I don't know how much more I could hear. Robbie, we know you are in infatuated with JoJo. You don't just love her. You think that she is the greatest gift on this earth. We got it. Robbie does ask both Jojo's parents for their blessing. Once Robbie leaves, Jojo's mom says that she loves Robbie. Robbie is more marriage material. He is a more practical fit. Robbie is ready for a serious life with Jojo. They also let Jojo know that he asked for both of their blessing when it came time to getting on one knee and that Jordan didn't ask. It was right then and there she started protecting Jordan and one of her brothers called her out and said, where does that come from? Is that what you really want deep down? Obviously, she just doesn't feel Jordan has a fair chance because everyone is team Robbie. Robbie came in there like a damn tornado, like wrapping them all up around his finger and then just left. Robbie has no problem letting the world know how much he loves her. 
Now it's time for their last one on one dates. She first goes on a date with Robbie and Robbie again, Robbie's all over her. Robbie is super affectionate, super loving. If Robbie could, he would have got on top of a mountain and let everyone in Thailand know how much he loved her. Jojo asks Robbie what he sees for the future. He sees family, he sees kids running around, paints this picture of them just being on the couch, trying to make a dinner, burning the dinner, ordering pizza, drinking wine, having fun, like a real playful, fun, loving marriage. Robbie has no doubts that he is in love with Jojo. He has no worries that he's going to break her heart. He has no worries that it's not gonna work. This is it for him. This is his woman. He's ready to go. He's ready to start life. Robbie then gives Jojo some photos of them together at the different dates and just makes sure that Jojo knows he is in it for the long haul. He is not going anywhere. It's then time for Jordan's date with Jojo, and you can just see the difference between the guys. He has a very hard time opening up, at least along the same line as Robbie. With Jordan, Jojo kind of has to like pull information out of him to like get to know what is going on in his head, where Robbie is just like, Brrrr. He lets us all know. Jordan then tries to explain why he didn't ask for her dad's blessing and you could tell she was just so pissed about it. He tried to say that he didn't want to ask without them meeting Robbie and he doesn't feel comfortable asking without knowing how Jojo feels 100% which I think is a lame excuse. You're here to take a chance on a girl yet when it comes time to the very end now you don't want to take that chance. All this did for Jojo was make her doubt that Jordan was here for the right reason. Jojo was not okay with his answer and so Jojo went back to Jordan's room to get some clarity because hello, she's supposed to pick one or the other the next day and this is happening now. He then says that he is comfortable with taking his leap of faith and that he doesn't want to lose her and that he made a mistake. He realizes what he did. He just wanted to know that she was in it 100% and he promises her that he will never hurt her. It's now time for the guys to pick out their rings. As always, they meet Neil Lane to go pick out a beautiful diamond to give to Jojo. They also both write a little handwritten card, and it was then that Jordan got on his cell phone and called Jojo's parents to get their blessing then. She gets a knock at the door. She reads Jordan's letter first. Now she says she feels so confused. She says she just knows she cannot keep going back and forth, that she needs to make a final decision. Okay, and now it comes to the rose ceremony. As you guys know, the first person that shows up to the rose ceremony is the unfortunate person that's going home that day. As you see that car door open, there you see Robbie. Listen, I didn't even really like Robbie the entire season, but after this past episode, I felt a little bad for him. He really did love JoJo. I think when he loves, he loves hard. And even though he's poured out his feelings to the entire world, it just wasn't good enough. He gets down there to meet Jojo and he immediately starts going on. He tells us that he knows this is the one, that his family adores Jojo and that he adores Jojo, that she is his best friend. He wants to be with her for the rest of his life and he's about to get on one knee and she stops him. She says that she can't watch him do that and then she says she wanted it to be him. She keeps saying, I wanted it to be you. I wanted it to be you. When I woke up today, I wanted it to be you. How do you think that makes someone feel? How do you even take that? That. What do you respond to that? What is Jordan gonna say when Jordan watches that? I wanted it to be you to the other guy? I would be pissed. She tells him that for some reason she woke up and her heart was somewhere else. That he deserves an amazing girl because he is an amazing guy. You could just tell he is in complete shock. He had this. This was it. This was his future wife and they were gonna spend the rest of their lives together. And he was just blindsided. Now it's time for Jordan. As you guys know, all you Team Jordan people, you got your wish. Jordan is JoJo's new fiance. And before Jordan proposes, she needs to let him know how she feels. She loves him, that she wants to be with him, and wants to be with him forever. And before you know it, he's asking her to marry. She's excited, she's crying, they're kissing. He keeps saying I love yous back and forth, and there you have it. JoJo and Jordan, together forever. Well, we'll see about that. Okay, so then after the final rose, Robbie gets to talk to Jojo. Jojo just says that she's happy, she's sorry, and then Jojo gets to be seen with Jordan. I mean, there really wasn't anything that exciting about that part of the episode. I don't feel like Jojo seemed as excited 
excited as I would be if I was gonna see my future husband. She did say that it was super difficult that this process has been hard because there's been a lot of bad publicity when it came time to her relationship with the men and whether it was Robbie or with Jordan, so many people had such negative things to say about both of them regarding exes, regarding fame, why they were there, if they were there for the wrong reasons, whatever. She just said it's been a really hard process but she was excited to be able to be seen with Jordan at this point. I mean, maybe that just got her down. Maybe she was just in a bad mood because of that. But honestly, it kind of felt like she looked super sad. Like maybe they just got in a raging fight before they started filming. I don't know. Something wasn't right. Something was off. What do you guys think? As always, let me know down below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this season with me. I've had so much fun doing these recaps with you guys. Don't forget to stay tuned for my Bachelor in Paradise recaps. I'm going to start those. ASAP. So make sure you come check back on my channel. If you guys aren't subscribed, but you guys are Bachelor fans, Bachelorette fans, Bachelor in Paradise fans, makeup fans, doesn't matter. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I post videos every single Wednesday, and I will see you guys all very soon. Bye. Ugh. Shit. Do I have that? To meet. To I need to get this going. This is crazy. That she has some trust issues from 